Hello, I'm James Hart, Investment Director at Witten Investment Trust. Today I'm joined by Pete Davis. Pete is the Lead Manager of the Lansdowne Global Developed Market Strategy. Pete and his team have been managing a global equity portfolio for Witten since 2012 and currently run about 18% of Witten's assets. Although this is a global mandate, the Lansdowne portfolio currently has approximately 40% of its assets invested in the UK market. Pete, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Thank you for having me. You're clearly very excited about the prospects for the UK companies in your portfolio. Can you explain why you see them as such a compelling opportunity? Sure. Um, I think I think there are probably two types of opportunity that are kind of related but distinct. One is people, to our minds, are massively uh, overly implying a very negative scenario for the UK economy and for companies exposed to that. And secondly, anything that's UK listed appears to us to have quite a big discount just for being listed in the UK, regardless of whether it's businesses UK oriented or not. And I'd say probably about half our exposure is in each category, really. Um, and the excitement, I think, is kind of twofold. It's it's kind of what you really look for in uh, investments is one, evaluation opportunity, and two, a change in conditions for companies to operate in. And what we've got at the moment to us is sort of generationally unique in both cases. So in terms of valuation, you know, I've been doing this job for 30 years and the kind of 20% distribution yields we're getting from UK companies today, shown on the slide here for the banks, is kind of unprecedented in my experience. You know, I go back to things like tobacco shares in the late 90s and, you know, the, the valuations just were nowhere close to this. And it's real cash you're getting. It's not a promise of cash in the future. It's cash coming through today. Um, so to some degree, it's more reliable. I think also then from an economic standpoint, you know, the part of the reason we got these extreme valuations is because obviously the last few years have been very difficult. I think what's really exciting to us is that when we look at kind of what's happening economically, A, when you look back, as shown in this chart, you know, we really are dealing with an unprecedentedly difficult two or three years. You know, this chart shows how energy prices and interest rates have changed on a one year basis over the last 10, 15 years. And you can see that the last two years had both. They had the worst ever energy crisis and the worst ever interest rate moves. And so, you know, that is a pretty negative backdrop for companies to operate in. Critically, both of those, I would argue, are now changing. You know, interest rates are reaching a peak of some form. Energy prices are already fallen. And the consequences of that are already becoming obvious. You know, what we're seeing now is inflation falling, the cost of living crisis, or real wages being going from a situation where they'd never been more negative than they were last year as the cost of living crisis really bit. Um, and moving to a situation where, on our estimates anyway, fourth quarter real wages will probably be higher than they've ever been in the last 25 years. And so that kind of inflection of sort of extreme valuation and an extreme change of conditions really is very is literally something I've never seen in my career. UK shares are, are clearly cheap in your view, and, and we would we would tend to agree with that. There are clearly some risks as well. I mean, interest rates remain high and are probably likely to remain higher for longer than the market had originally thought. Um, this potentially could feed through to mortgage rates being higher for longer and um, an impact the housing market and the consumer. So how, how do you how do you think about the risks that um, the UK is exposed to? I think the valuations assume things get a lot worse. And yet, given conditions are stabilizing, I think it's very unlikely they get a lot worse. I think the question of whether they get a lot better goes to some of the points you're describing. Um, I mean, what you're seeing actually thus far this year is actually a fairly high degree of resilience for everything that's not exposed to new mortgage buyers. You know, if you actually look at things like the trading of our pub companies, airlines, etc., you can see a resilience in the consumer. You know, it makes sense in, in two ways, really. One is that actually the UK consumer is totally differently configured from how they were 15 years ago. You know, this chart here shows you the main way in which houses are owned by constituency. And you can see that, you know, there just are a lot more owner occupiers who don't have mortgages than anymore. And savings are a lot higher than they were 15 years ago. That means that actually interest rates have a very profound effect on a small proportion of the population but they actually often have a positive effect for quite a lot of the, especially older people in the population. And so I think, you know, what we're seeing is what we would expect, namely that actually interest rates rising reallocate, reallocate within the economy, but actually the negative impact, assuming there isn't the uncertainty there, is probably manageable. Yeah. And, you know, it's often said that the job of the equity investor is to 
is to, is to look ahead and to, to look at the, the world in six, 12 months time, three years time, or perhaps even five years time. Um, but it does strike me at the moment that the investors in the UK are looking at today or indeed in the past. So I think if you're right, then it looks like the UK market could be set for um, certainly for a short term rebound. It's what's really interesting is to your point, it, this, this increased confidence is already happening. The chart here shows you how people evaluate their own situation over the next 12 months compared to the last 12 months. And you can see it's massively improved, you know, actually to quite a positive level already. When you ask them about the broader economy, they're far more pessimistic because they read the same newspapers we all read and listen to that. But what's really exciting to me is, is that whether it's the inflection in conditions from race and energy prices or it's actually the dynamic of the economy, it's already happening. It's not even a case really of predicting the future to any great degree, I would argue. There are some in the, in the market who fear that the UK is in long term decline. What do you see as the sort of competitive advantages that the UK has? Um, and, and what might be the catalysts for either this long term, this decline to reverse or indeed for the, the UK market to re-rate? I think the, I mean, the, the two questions there. One, what's the market going to trade off over the next 12 months? where, to be honest, I think the combination of these, the extremeness of the valuation and the change in operating conditions on a 12-month view, to me, I suspect will dominate and give very strong performance for our, our shares in that period. And, and sometimes as an investor, to your point, often we're trying to be long-term, but actually there's times where you can be too long-term, especially in this market. And so I think your questions are 100% relevant ones on a five-year view, but probably ones that we're going to think about a lot but invest on the basis of after we've seen this sort of uh, next 12 months move, which we think could be very, you know, as you can imagine, think be very meaningful. I think to this longer term point, I mean, basically the question is what's going to promote investment in the UK, both from a sort of people buying shares in it, but also the economic prospects. You know, I think it's pretty clear that in both private and public sectors and financial markets, the UK has just seen an absence of investment, which in turn has consequences in terms of growth prospects and valuations and has become somewhat self-fulfilling. Um, the good news, I think, is there's plenty of reasons to invest in the UK. Obviously, we're talking about the financial logic of it through high, low prices, but actually whether it's sort of sport, conservation, universities, you know, the UK is very long IP that's relevant to the global market and lots of people want to base themselves in the UK. They always have done and still do. And one of the interesting things for us where we're working with Witten is to try in our, our venture portfolio, investing in a lot of these businesses ourselves. And we can say both two things. One, there's amazing opportunities there, but two, there's very little capital pursuing those opportunities, which again, hopefully is good for investors, but needs to change for the UK. Whether those investing conditions change, I think is a function of, you know, do investors get welcomed into the UK? Do they see the certainty they need to take long-term investment decisions? which in turn brings us on to a lot of issues that I'm sure you, we, we could talk for hours about, but I probably should pause on that. You did mention uh, they're talking about um, investment in the UK and, and the government um, is, is, has made quite a lot of noise recently about um, trying to, uh, to improve investment levels, not only in the listed market, but also um, in private businesses. Um, I mean, obviously, we might have a change of government coming up soon. Um, mm. The last general election was clearly a... a, a, a a decision between two diametrically opposed populist leaders. It looks this looks as though this time round, um, slightly more of a centrist choice. Um, how do you think about politics and and its role in promoting investments in the UK and and perhaps its positive or negative impact on uh, companies in your portfolio? The immediate perspective, I think, is just an absence of negatives should be more than enough, given where. I think it's both quite likely and should be more than enough to allow our portfolio to prosper for 12, 18 months. And so, as you rightly say, you know, whereas the, the last five, seven years in UK politics has been characterized by extremes, choices between extremes, you know, the people have preferences, but the choice is, is quite a narrow one. And yet the market is pricing off the uncertainty that's been realized for the last five years and doesn't look that likely in the next 12, 18 months. So I think that positive is similar to what we see elsewhere, namely an assumption of a negative is probably not unlikely when you look at the fundamentals. Um, I think then you, and I think the second positive is, as you say, I think I'm hopeful that the problem of a lack of investment is now evident to both parties and is is in both narratives. You know, certainly what you see in the rest of the world with things like 
you know, the IRA in the US or, you know, competition with Asia, you know, it's, it's pretty clear that both parties now at least highlight investment as being important, which is progress. And then you go on to the interesting question of which one, what policies would work to affect that. As I say, personally, I'd be more optimistic on the basis that I think so much of the investment should happen and is just being distorted by negatives that actually I don't think the government has to do a huge amount given how low prices are to encourage people back. You know, rising prices tend to create their own investment as well. So I think the good news is the good news is that people are alert to it and would like to do the right thing and they probably don't have to do very much to improve the situation. I guess the bad news is, you know, can we really get a long term, you know, the same point you make about markets being very short term applies to sort of strategic policies and you know, can we get really good long term policies in the current political environment is to be proven, I guess, from either party, I would Absolutely. say. Absolutely. One one thing I would add is I think where there is a big misperception of, and again another negative that's unrealized is if we're right about the cyclical side of things, then the fiscal situation in the UK should be a lot better than most people assume, actually. And you're seeing it this year to date is that the OVR now are probably about probably will end up being twenty five, thirty billion too pessimistic in terms of the outcome for the fiscal deficit. And the chart we show here shows our, our estimates of that going forward. And actually, you know, contrary to what most people believe, there is a lot more fiscal flexibility in the scenario we describe than to, to catalyze some of the investments we're talking about than generally realized. So, you know, so much I think can turn positive if you get that initial thing. And it does feel that that initial. You speak to a lot of company bosses in, you know, in, in your business, um, whether they are investee businesses or whether they're potential investments. What kind of color are you getting from them on the state of the economy in which they're operating? And, and perhaps more importantly for us as investors, what are, what, what are they doing to help improve their own prospects and indeed prospects for us as shareholders? So the good news is they're all generating cash flow, you know, the, the, and as I said earlier, the nice thing in a way about super high risk premiums, such as what we've got at the moment, is you get paid to wait. And so, you know, as I said earlier, you know, we're getting distribution yields of close to 20% on on the, the financial assets we own. Now, clearly, our hope is that that distribution yield goes down, you know, the price goes up a long, long way and the distribution yield goes down. But even if it doesn't, and we just made 20% per annum, you know, we'll, in absolute terms, probably feel pretty good about life. Um, so I think the starting point is they're doing the right, they're, they're, even despite a sl what I would describe as a sluggish op econom economy, they're generating lots of cash for, for, our, for, you, for us as investors. Um, I think the two things that I'd point out. One is there is definitely a real frustration. I mean, it's, it's weird. You wouldn't normally ask companies this, but unprompted, what I get a lot is, why are my shares so cheap? Mm -hmm. You know, that is definitely the dominant question, which in turn, I think, speaks to the good news about that, I think, is it, it speaks to a, a view that companies can cope with most things. You know, if you look at what companies have coped with and are still generating this cash, you know, as I showed earlier, the interest rate move, the energy move, COVID, you know, companies that are generating cash today are coping with a lot to do that. And so I think they're incredibly resilient companies. And then the other feature we've got is, of course, what a lot of companies are doing, it's nearly two thirds of our portfolio, both in and outside the UK, is buying back their own shares. You know, the way they respond to super cheap shares is to buy back, buy, buy them back and, you know, enable them to increase their distribution yield by, with the same cash, delivering it to fewer shareholders. So we're seeing those two things. I think, the final thing I'd say is, um, in terms of the long, the other feature you get from companies is, to your point, is I think all companies say we're running this business for the long term, and yet we have no short term. All we get from investors are short term questions. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it really is. I think probably the characteristic that links politics and economics at the moment is, you know, the short term is dominating the long term in terms of what people want to talk about, which obviously for us is both frustrating but also what creates opportunity. I mean, as you rightly said, normally one has to be incredibly insightful about what's going to happen in the future. Whereas actually today, if it's different from what's just happened, you're probably going to make a lot of money, even if it's pretty obvious what's going to happen. Thank you very much, Pete, for your fascinating insights into the way that you think about the UK economy and also um, more importantly about how you think about investing in companies in the UK and also across the world. Our pleasure. And thank you for all the support as well. It's, 